MBTI or the Myers-Briggs 16 personalities can be a great tool to learn more about how another person thinks, feels, or perceives the world. But today, it's often used to label people and box people in. And it's been used as a fixed and absolute system rather than a fun and interesting and unique open-ended system to explore individual human psychology. In this video, I want to show you something better something you can do instead of using the MBTI the wrong way. I used to find it really difficult to deal with people online commenting on my videos saying that I was mistyped. It got worse and worse when different organizations and even experts started accusing me of being some other type. It was even more confusing because nobody seemed to agree. Everyone agreed that I was mistyped, but nobody could agree on what type I should be instead. In many ways, as a YouTube creator, to be accused of being mistyped is to have your very credibility as a creator questioned. If he isn't sure about his own personality type, then how can we trust anything else that he says, right? And that's a problem that has happened to a lot of creators online. Yeah, many YouTube creators that used to make really creative and insightful videos on MBTI and personality psychology stopped posting videos simply because their audience started becoming too critical of their online persona. How could you claim to be an INFJ when you seem to be so much more creative? How could you claim to be an INFP when you seem so outgoing? How could you be an ENFP when you are able to be so composed when you talk? Yeah, we love to put these kinds of general attacks and vague sweeping criticisms to people and we love to discuss and debate the type online. Now, I'm not here to dispute or talk about why we should have type debates. I think type debates can be healthy when done the right way. Yeah. Being able to discuss how you see yourself or why you identify with a certain personnel type or how you see a certain personnel type, that is a positive thing. The best and biggest strength of the MBTI is when it's used to help us understand ourselves and other people better. But a lot of times the debate stops at the superficial. So often I have to scroll through comments saying, you're obviously mistyped, you're definitely an ESTJ, or you're definitely an ESTP, or no, you must be an ISFP, or you must be this or that type, right? And people so confidently and in such few words, using simply one type label to try to get me down or to try to dismiss what I say in the video. So rarely do I see intelligent people who post intelligent and educated criticisms and suggestions and ideas in the comments. What I look for is for you to actually think about my ideas and the content of my message. What specifically in my videos would you disagree with and do differently? And how would you define something? And why do you see it that way? And what made you come to that conclusion? And this is the kind of debate that that's missing in the MBTI. Now the MBTI was created to be a tool the creators of the MBTI called it the best fit personality, not an absolute, not a fixed personality. And Carl Jung himself said that type categories were just labels. They were a tool for people to better understand each other's. Yeah, personality psychology is a map, it's not the territory. And what that means is a map can reflect how something could look, but ultimately we're dealing with individuals. Yeah, billions and billions of individual people with their own developments, cognitive functions, and specializations. Because we're all different, we couldn't simply be generalized into 16 personality types. And because people aren't cut like uh, pieces of cake in a bakery factory, right? Every single one has their own unique shape and flavor. And so when we use the 16 types, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create something simple and accessible to the wider public. We're trying to create a system that can create healthy debates and discussions among people at work, in relationships, about what they feel, what's important to them, what values that matter most, what priorities they have, how they like to think and approach decision making. And so through these debates, we can learn about each other's and foster a constructive conversation about what we like and expect from one another, as well as what we want and expect from ourselves. Without this kind of a conversational framework, 
without a way to discuss these things, a lot of the time, personality psychology is shrugged off or ignored. We don't talk about or ask our employees or co-workers about what they prefer when they work. We simply give them a job and expect them to do it. And here we lose out on the chance to properly motivate and make people feel connected to us. Every single time you meet another person, you have a chance to use the MBTI to get to know them better. You can ask them questions such as how they feel about the introversion and extroversion, and if they relate more to intuition or sensing. Instead, what we often do is we slap the MBTI as a label on them. Oh, oh, I've already typed you. You must be an ISTP because I find you to be lazy and stupid, right? A lot of the time we use it to project our own negative bias about personality psychology and personality types. In fact, the 16 personalities were meant to be neutral categories, meaning they were not supposed to be better or worse, but still a lot of people can't help but rank the types in their head. This is the kind of type that I like, these are the kind of types I want around me, and if I don't like you or if you annoy me in some way, it must be because you're the wrong personality type. And because you're that personal type, I don't want to hang out with you. Often these kinds of ways create the opposite of what Carl Jung intended. Intention was to create genuine human connection. He believed that we can learn to understand any personality and we can learn to achieve and experience better relationships by practicing this kind of openness. Yeah. You limit yourself and you miss out by judging other people based on neutral characteristics that they have and neutral differences that they have. Sure, they might have genuine issues and problems and unhealthy patterns that they engage in just like you do. However, the MBTI is not meant to be the framework which diagnoses health. You can have successful and unsuccessful versions, healthy and unhealthy versions of each personality type. Because, of course, once again, the MBTI does not measure your level of development or your skill. Now, a lot of people will claim that the MBTI is not scientific. And, yeah, if the claim is that there are 16 unique categories that exist across human nature and that everyone can neatly be classified into one of these 16 boxes, that's obviously an unscientific statement. But if the claim is that we can group and categorize certain personality traits into different traits and study people who we know are broad and varied and nuanced using these categories in a way that to help to simplify and make the discussion more easy and accessible for people across the planet, well, yeah. That's the distinction that we're going to have to deal with, right? So we are going to have to be a little bit more modest in how we use the MTI. If we use it the way it's meant to be and the way it's intended to be, we can have better relationships, we can connect more deeply with others, and we can connect more deeply with ourselves. But if we use it to stereotype people, if we pretend that these are fixed or absolute objective categories, well we're going to have a bad time and yeah, nobody around you is going to take you seriously either. The truth is, I believe every single person in the world could be interested in personality psychology if it's done right. Yeah, whenever I talk about the MBTI, people around me start asking questions and everyone's curious and everyone wants to know more. And of course, people have questions. And the number one question that they will give is, but can people really be grouped into 16 boxes? And here, I answer the same way every time. Of course not. Every single person is unique. These categories are just meant to be general study frameworks. They're just meant to help you get introduced to the topic. Now, what do you relate to more? Do you find yourself being more introverted and more extroverted? It'll sometimes happen that friends and family members around you interested in the MBTI might say that, hey, I think I'm this type. I'm starting to think if I might be that type instead of this type, right? And here you have two options. You can be a douchebag or you can be a genuine good friend, right? And here the douchebag version is to once again engage in stereotyping. No, you're definitely this type because I have put you in that box and I have these expectations on you and how you should act. And you can't be any other personality type or to be the genuine good friend and say, hey, that's interesting. What made you think that way? Remember, 
We're using type as an instrument, not as the truth in itself. What's really interesting is what your friend is going to say next. Well, lately I've been feeling a lot more outgoing, and when I started reflecting more on my life, I realized that for the most part of my life, I've been very assertive and I've been very passionate as a person. It's only been when I've struggled with depression or some social anxiety that I've sometimes turned a bit more inwards, but usually I like to be outgoing, right? And here you have the chance to really listen to and understand something about somebody, that they've had a complex character journey, that they've had a transformation, and that they're starting to feel a bit better about themselves. And here you can say, oh, that's really cool, and that's great that you feel that way. And you can follow this up as far as you want, and that's really the true goal of the MBTI, to create these kind of conversations. After all, so often do we sit together in classrooms or at work with our colleagues, engaging in silly, pointless small talk. Nobody likes it, not even the censors, believe me. Every single person wants to be understood and wants to feel a connection to you. And when they don't feel connected to you, they feel alone, even when they're with you. And the same goes both ways. And the personality psychology and the MTI is one way to shake up these boring autopilot questions. Of what do you do? Where do you work? Where do you live? Yeah, here you have the chance to really ask, why do you live there? What made you come here? What made you start that job? And how do you feel about this? And where brought you to this? And in that, there's a chance to learn something that's genuinely interesting about other people. Yeah, I'm not here to bash the MBTI. I'm only here to speak about the genuine issue that has been a genuine problem for me as a YouTuber and a creator, and to ask you to please do better. If you have been stereotyping in the past, or if you made these mistakes in the past, it happens. Yeah. Every single person can get sometimes lazy and the mind has its tendency to want to be superficial and to box people in and to do these things. But a genuine scientist has an open mind, practices curiosity, asks questions, and keeps definitions open to change over time so that they can learn what's really happening in the universe and, of course, in the universe of our mind. And I remember, I know it's not most in the community. I know most of you have been nothing but appreciative of my videos and my content. And I continue to feel happy and grateful to have all of you around. And I continue to feel passion when I talk about psychology. And I will continue to make videos for a long time to come. Yeah, when I was a younger YouTuber, it was very difficult for me to deal with how other people thought about me online. I had a sensitive and agreeable inclination. I wanted to be everyone's friend, that I wanted to connect with and understand everyone. And when other people would push these kind of labels on me or would push these kinds of criticisms on me, I had no idea what to say or how to deal with that. What am I supposed to do in that kind of a situation as a creator? Am I supposed to debate or argue with it? And then how long should I spend answering these kind of questions or rebuttals? And if these people are not willing to listen to or hear my point of view and what I experience of myself, what am I supposed to do in that situation? I mean, ultimately, I've lived my life for more than 30 years and I've been in my own head for more than 30 years. I've spent more time than anyone introspecting and journaling and reflecting on myself and who I am. And to have people online who have seen a one minute video of me come in and comment and say, oh, Eric must be mistyped, you know, that's so discrediting. I mean, I have had more experience with myself than anyone out there. Here I have to wonder, what's your problem? Who do you think you are? A lot of these tendencies in the MTI falls under what we could consider to be gatekeeping. In every single community online, there is a tendency towards gatekeeping. People will tell you you're not a real Harry Potter fan unless you've done X or Y. And you're not a real Lord of the Rings fan unless you have this or that. And you're not a real fan if you like that, but not this, right? And people will use this everywhere to try to put you down and to try to discredit you or to try to make you feel like you don't fit in. Yeah, let me be 100% transparent with you. 
I have explored multiple personality types for myself. I have spent a long time discussing and reflecting on different definitions to see which one fits me best. I have asked all the questions, I have talked with other experts, I've listened to others to try to get as accurate as understanding of myself as possible, but ultimately I've had to make up my own mind about where to put the border, where goes the middle, how do I deal with when I'm between these and do st to the, these two things? What do I do when I struggle to decide on these and these two definitions? I've had to make my own choice about what definitions to use, what methodology to use, and how to approach type. Because honestly, it's not that clear cut. A lot of these definitions that you encounter online are whimsical and abstract at best. There's a billion blog posts about what it means to be an INFJ or an ENFJ. And not to speak about cultural differences. People coming from Sweden being more introverted and people from the US expecting you to be more extroverted just because of cultural notions of what that means, right? While everyone can have different opinions, ultimately you have to make up your own mind about who you are. And people that don't know who they are and don't define themselves and don't hold to a solid self-concept have a lot of issues making decisions about their life, about relationships, about work, about their career, and remain in a sense of limbo. People that allow other people's opinions about them to shape them and how they act are more likely to live according to other people's expectations and to become people pleasers. And these kind of people are less likely to feel happy with the choices that they make. Yeah, only by trusting your own gut and making decisions for yourself and allowing yourself to create your own theory of mind and worldview can you really live a happy and healthy life. And so the same goes if you try to force your opinions on other people and to project and give them an identity and tell them who they are. What you're doing is a grave error. You're putting somebody in a situation which will cause them to often have more doubts about themselves and to feel less secure in who they are. And this adds up to a lot more problems in life. Yeah, what you really should be doing in these kind of situations where you disagree with other people's definitions and framing is you should debate the definitions, not their type, but rather how do they look at the traits? How do they look at the scales? How do they look at the functions? And how did they end up making the decision that they did? Ultimately, you gotta have enough respect in your bones to be able to say, honestly, Hi, I respect you for typing yourself that way and I understand why you see yourself that way. After you explain these things, it's a lot more clear to me how you ended up thinking the way that you did. Because that's what it means to be a decent human being and a friend. To respect other people's choices, to allow people to walk their own path and to draw their own conclusions and to reach their own insights. Imagine coming up to somebody and saying, hey, that's not a fruit, that's a tomato, that's a vegetable, right? Obviously, you can classify these things differently. These kind of debates cannot be considered anything but silly. I mean, yeah, if you think a tomato is a vegetable, go right ahead. It's a logical assumption. I can understand why you would say that. Because, yeah, after all, most people don't like tomato in a fruit salad. Let's be a part of a revolution which changes the MBTI from this kind of absolute kinds of frameworks to people that talk about MBTI and personality psychology in an open-ended, curious, and scientific way. I have three criteria for a healthy use of MBTI and personality psychology, and one, it's better the more practical and measurable the definitions are, it's better the less abstract they are. And yeah, it's better when the definitions provide extensive and in-depth insight into a person than when they are general, vague, or stereotypical. It's better, of course, when the definitions that we use can be used to make accurate predictions about a person, their career, or long-term choices. And it's absolutely pointless if we're just engaging in some kind of belly button looking and binging. And hey, that's probably a Swedish saying. And that's probably something that doesn't make any sense when you translate it. What I really mean is, 
Stop nitpicking on definitions, stop nitpicking on labels, and start focusing on the content of a person's individual character. Thank you so much for watching, and see you all in the next video.